what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel doing some more Steelers Ravens film room work uh gonna be taking a look at Broderick Jones first round pick getting his first career star in a rivalry game play pretty well man I was really impressed with the tape uh, the numbers look really good as well so I know a lot of you guys have been hitting me up uh wanting to see something on Broderick so I'm gonna give into that shout out to my guy Caleb who's asking about it on Twitter uh, going to get into some snaps, going to look at the positives, um, the negatives, which there weren't a ton, uh, but going to go over his performance as a whole and what this kind of means for him moving forward. Uh, just before we get started, please make sure you like the video, subscribe, all that stuff is greatly appreciated on my end. Let's rock it. So we talked about it uh, going into the Ravens game. You know, the Ravens throw a lot of exotic stuff at you uh, from an upfront perspective with all their blitzes, their simulated pressures, their creepers, all this different stuff. So we knew uh, with two new starters between Jones and uh, Nate Herbig that they were going to throw some stuff uh, at the offensive line early on to kind of see how they responded. And this was kind of the first third down of the game. You see that the Ravens are going to run a TE stunt. Uh, with their defensive tackle and edge defender right here. Um, really, they're given a five-man pressure look, so this is really just one-on-one -on -one across the board. But Jones does a good job, you know, getting on the same page with Samalo, and, you know, they're on the same plane on their drop back. So you can kind of see he gets out of his stance. Immediately as he sees this edge defender's kind of helmet turn inside, he knows that he's about to, you know, get some contact from this defensive lineman. Does a good job just kind of absorbing this contact. And just anchoring down, make sure that he's not giving much ground. But overall, you know, it's a good job just to make sure that you're on the same playing field. And what I mean by that is like staying square, but also staying on the same line as the guard because it makes it easier to pass off those stunts. Uh, so nothing too crazy, but a good enough job, you know, allows Kenny Pickett to get the ball out to Connor Hayward. You get a first down on third down um, deep towards your own end zone. That's always a good thing. And anytime you're throwing in new bodies kind of up front on the offensive line, especially with the young quarterback, you want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. And especially in a game like this where you're going to see some exotic stuff up front. So this is uh, Pickett, you know, checking the protection right here. Uh, this is probably the same, you know, Randy call that we saw in the game winner. Uh, but just getting a five-person slide to the right um, in order to get this thing picked up. Jones does a good job, you know, just making sure that he's on the same page and he understands his assignment. You know, that's that's part of the battle. That's a, you know, if you don't know what you're doing up front, that's a good way to get your quarterback hit. Uh, we saw that happen a couple of different times, you know, over the course of the season. Heck, it happened to Lamar Jackson a couple of times in this game where guys didn't know what they were supposed to be doing and got him hit. So just a good job right here. Just coming off the ball, sliding to his right, picking up this defensive uh, lineman. You see high hand, low hand. Left hand's a little bit far outside, but overall a nice job just to anchor in. You know, it doesn't allow any type of penetration up the middle. Uh, that's a good enough pocket. We just don't really get a uh, probably a good enough throw or a good enough effort right here uh, from Pickens on the back shoulder. One of the things that obviously stood out on Broderick's college tape was just how good of a run blocker he was. Um, and there's a lot of different reasons for him being so good in that regard. But I really thought that um, a lot of those kind of traits showed up in this Ravens game, particularly as the game kind of wore on and you kind of saw him get his feet wet a little bit up front. But just the movement ability and the movement skills, uh, his ability to move in space. Uh, he makes everything like that just look really easy. The athleticism itself really pops on tape. This is something that's, you know, kind of simple and often overlooked. But this, these type of reach blocks uh, where he's asked to come down and get to the front side um, of a defender or a defensive lineman that's not lined up across from him necessarily. So you got this defensive tackle right here. He's lined up in a, a three technique. So on the outside shade of the left guard, Broderick's uncovered. They're just going to run a zone play to the right side. Uh, but just look how easy this is for him to get to this front side shoulder. I mean, by the time he gets basically to his third or fourth step, I guess you could say, he's already to the front side of the shoulder. Uh, he gets a little bit of help from Sam Allo there, but that's exactly what Sam Allo is supposed to do. And this, you know, this play is going to have a little bit of a chance if, if we're able to get this um, – inside linebacker or if Mason Cole doesn't lose his block pretty much immediately at the line of scrimmage, which that's been a problem really all season long. But again, I just think that you can see his athleticism pop on tape. You know, that first step's going to set the angle of departure. You know, you see his foot turn, but just how quickly he's able to get that second step in the ground, which is going to, you know, allow him to kind of get to full speed as quickly as possible. And the fact that he's able to get there um, so easily is just a really encouraging sign because, you know, these are better athletes, uh, more explosive guys than he was playing even in the SEC at Georgia. So the fact that that stuff's translating is a good thing. 
kind of a, another example right here of just the Ravens doing some exotic stuff up front, uh, bringing a stunt here. But I think this really, again, once again, shows off, um, you know, Broderick's athleticism, but also his mental processing is all the way there early on. Uh, he was really dialed in, so, you know, got Jadavion Clowney out there as a wide nine technique. Uh, the Ravens showing a five-man front up front. Um, off the snap, you'll see Clowney spike inside. And anytime you see, you know, especially really athletic guys like this, it's a really athletic move from Clowney. But, you know, he's trying to basically go in and pick or draw the attention um, of Jones. And then they're going to actually sneak this defensive tackle who's lined up on the right side of the offensive line. They're going to try to sneak him all the way over across Broderick Jones' left shoulder. But just watch his eyes kind of manipulate and kind of work through the targets here. So he sees Clowney spiking inside. Okay, I, who do I have that's coming over the top? And even though the linebacker drops out, you know, he has the mental awareness in the football IQ to understand that somebody's coming over to his left. You see he easily just kind of, you know, it looks really easy with him all the time, just his movements and space. But he's able to kind of flip his hips right here and then drive this, uh, you know, pass rusher kind of up the field. And, you know, the pocket for Kenny Pickett, you know, is, is fairly clean right here. You know, he's got a good window to kind of step up into. You see how he's able to, you know, drive off that front foot. And that's a good job picking that up. So, again, just rookies, you know, seeing a rookie like this process some of these stunts, um, you know, Baltimore was clearly making a concentrated effort early on in the game to make sure that he was there. Um, and, you know, paying attention to that stuff in the film room. And I thought that he responded really well and, you know, just kept getting better and better over the course of the game. So right here, the Steelers are going to motion into kind of a four-strong look with Calvin Austin. Uh, this is just five-man protection really across the board. Uh, you know, this is a big play from Kenny Pickett on the back shoulder to George Pickens. But, um, you know, Broderick Jones does a really good job, you know, one-on-one -on -one with Kyle Van Noy. And I, I want to put this into context a little bit. Van Noy is not a traditional pass rusher. He's more of kind of a Swiss Army knife hybrid type player. He plays inside, he plays outside, depending on where he's played, uh, New England, all these different places. Um, so not the greatest of competition, in my opinion, for like these one-on-one -on -one type of reps. But I do think it's a good sign that Jones was able to win these reps against a veteran guy like this who's been around and knows kind of what offensive tackles are looking to do um, in their pass set. So you'll see him kind of set vertically right here. And really, Van Noy is just trying to go at him with speed to power. Um, speed to power is definitely um, something – you know, that Jones is going to be able to uh, kind of counter over the course of his career if he can get his hand placement um, really pristine and on point. That's something we talked about with the draft video. Y'all can go back and watch that if y'all are interested. Uh, but right here, I think he does a pretty good job with his hands. You know, his hands are, you know, at least his left hand is kind of in tight right there. You know, he's able to kind of absorb this contact and then kind of redirect that force up and anchor down does a good job you know as at the end of that rep you know Van Noy pretty much is just kind of falling off the edge and this is a really clean pocket for Kenny Pickett I thought the offensive line in general did a pretty good job in pass pro against the Ravens I know they were down some rushers um, and that's not really necessarily their strong point um, on defense but really good rep from Jones again just you know speed to power absorbing that anchoring down and pushing that defender up the field Really nice rep. Ends up in a big game for George Pickens. And I think the best examples of, you know, his run blocking prowess kind of come a little bit later in the game. But I just think um, you do see some of the flashes early on. Just like I said, when his hand placement is good, he has the ability and the pop in his hands and just the general play strength and power uh, to be an impact player in the run game. You'll see him come off the ball here. The Steelers are just running a little inside zone from the gun. Um, you know, his hand placement is – good on this play you see he's got both hands inside the defender and just generally you know creates a little bit of you see that pop back uh, from the edge defender right there creating a little displacement does a good job sticking with the block you know nothing crazy and the ball probably isn't going to roll out to his uh, side very often that's usually not where outside zone hits it usually does hit on the back side of the center um, at least it has this year for them. But, you know, generally just a good job, you know, not going to block her off three, four yards. Those are good things that you want to see, especially from Jones in the run game, which is kind of, you know, where he is going to probably make the most of his living, at least early on in this, his career. 
and we knew there was going to be an adjustment with Brodrick and Pass Pro just for some of the stuff that he was kind of doing at Georgia, getting away with that we he probably wouldn't get away with in the league. But there was also going to be an adjustment just in coaching philosophy. So Pat Mayer, the um, Steelers offensive line coach, the way that he teaches offensive line play is a little bit different than this. So you're going to see the difference in technique uh, from Chooks Okorafor and Broderick Jones. So Chooks is going to use this independent hand move. He's going to kind of flash or bait his uh, outside hand. And then he's going to go inside hand to strike uh, the shoulder pad of the defender. And you see him just kind of alternating those hands. Uh, but Broderick, you know, he's going to use more of a two-hand approach. And, you know, it's okay to mix these in and mix this stuff up every now and then with the two-hand approach. Uh, you just have to do it, do a really good job and be really mindful about not lunging. But I think on this play particularly, he does a good job staying pretty balanced. And he creates this shock. Like I said, when his hands connect and connect in the right spot with the defender, you can tell how powerful and how much pop he has in these things. Uh, you see the defender, you see that head jolt back. That's a good. That's usually a good indication that the offensive lineman is uh, dealing with some force right there. But a good job just riding that guy kind of up the field. Does a pretty good job, you know, staying square until that um, until the edge defender gets really wide, and then he kind of turns his hips a little bit, but easily just kind of rides this guy out. You know, by by that time, Kenny Pickett's already got the ball out. Another back shoulder to George Pickens. This one's incomplete, but really good rep one on one and pass pro there from Broderick. One of the things I really enjoyed about watching Broderick's tape in college was just, you know, some of the stuff that he was allowed to get away with just due to sheer athleticism and honestly just talent. Um, even like when his technique wasn't the greatest, you would still see him win reps against really good players. And I, th I thought that this was a really funny example of that um, on Sunday against the Ravens going up against Jadavion Clowney. So we just talked about kind of that two hand punch approach and uh, why it's really important to not, you know, get caught leaning because of what defenders will attempt to do to you in that in that regard. But you see, he's going to go with this kind of two hand punch right here. Gets caught leaning a little bit. Clowney does a good job with this kind of two hand swipe to get his uh, hands out of his face. Um, he does slip a little bit, so I do think that that's worthy. Maybe this rep looks a little bit different if he doesn't uh, slip. But just look at Broderick's ability to just kind of mirror those movements and just kind of shift back inside, move his feet, move his feet, just to stay in front, stays connected, stays attached throughout the block. Um, just a really good example, you know, of his athleticism in space and the, some of the things that he can do. And Clowney's still, even at his age, uh, he's still a really explosive athlete. So the fact that Broderick's doing that in his first start um, – you know, is, is a really impressive sign for what's to come in the future. And I really wanted to highlight some of these plays of just his technique um, and some of the ways that he's winning right now, just so I can give you guys an idea of, you know, kind of just how important, you know, recovery ability is at the NFL level. Because, look, I mean, you can be a really good technician. You could be a really, uh, you know, experienced offensive lineman. There's going to be times where, you know, defensive, defensive pass rushers are going to have your number. They're going to, you know, make a really good move, and you're going to have to recover when you get put in those compromising positions. And it's kind of another example. You know, he's he's not necessarily lunging like crazy, but he is lunging a little bit, a little bit off balance. But you see the two-hand uh, two hand jam to start. This edge rusher is going to give him kind of a two-hand swipe or side scissors move to the outside. Uh, but again, just I think it's a good job of just recovering, even though he gets put in this compromising position where the you know defender has a little bit of a step on him right here. Just watch him move his feet and get up the arc. I mean, really, for offensive tackles, you want to make sure that you can protect at least up to about nine, nine and a half yards um, up the field from the pocket. And that's the kind of depth um, that you really want to, you know, try to uphold in terms of uh, for the quarterback's integrity. But, you know, I think that this is good enough right here. You know, Pickett has a chance to go to the left side of the field and then work all the way to the right side of the field. I think that's good enough. So even when, you know, things aren't necessarily perfect from a technical perspective, um, I think that Broderick's athleticism and his recovery ability is something that's really going to set him apart from some of the other guys that the Steelers have had play this position um, in a while. Another thing that you saw uh, from Broderick Jones, just mixing up his sets uh, whenever the Steelers were trying to give these guys some different looks. So this time you have more of what I would kind of classify as like a 45-degree set where he's setting more um, more horizontal than vertical necessarily. Uh, and it allows, you know, Pickett to get a good pocket here to hit George Pickens over the middle. But uh, you see kind of his angle of departure out of his pass set here. It's more horizontal to the left side of the field. Um, but, you know, getting out of his stance quick, and, you know, making sure that he's set before, you know, he's beating the defender to the spot, right? And, again, you know, you see that left hand, just the kind of jolt that he can get on these defenders, like when he does land. Now, that punch is a little bit high. You got to be careful with that. Um, but, again, look at the angle of uh, the edge rusher and where he's trying to come to the quarterback 
And then watch when Broderick makes contact with him right here, what it does to him. It literally knocks him off balance. And knocking him a little bit, like a yard, yard and a half to the left, really all it does is it just creates more space between the defender and the quarterback, right? That's pretty simple. We want to keep those guys away from number eight and does a good job. You know, nothing crazy. Uh, but, an, an, again, another really good rep right there in pass pro. Really one of the best plays of the day, I feel like, from Jones came on this uh, rep. Still is a running kind of um, – what looks kind of like mid zone uh, to Broderick's side. Uh, this is one of the best runs, if not the best run, from Najee Harris on the day. Wasn't much runner room uh, whenever he was in the game. But, uh, you know, he's going to get matched up here with Patrick Queen in the hole. And, you know, you can see him just latch on. You know, ducks his head a little bit, but does a good job, you know, getting good hand placement. And I might be able to show this from a different angle, but uh, you'll see kind of how he's got that left hand high and the right hand low. This is kind of like that, uh, like they call this, I think, like the steering wheel technique. Um, and really what this allows is the offensive lineman to kind of generate torque um, and kind of control um, defenders and be able to, you know, stay uh, attached if you will, down the field. Um, this is a really good block. You know, you can pause this, kind of freeze frame it. Najee gets kind of a bounce read right here. But, you know, this is a really good hole. You see the hole, obviously, in between Washington and Jones. Going to create this one-on-one -on -one with the safety. You know, he does fall off the block a little bit down the down the field. But I, I think overall, you know, that's a really good rep right there by 77. Um, and so one of the maybe better reps that you'll see uh, from a hand technique perspective. This next play is a tough one. I think this is the one pressure that Pro Football Focus tagged him with on the afternoon, which, you know, all in all for, you know, I think Pickett had 30-something dropbacks. All in all, if you allow one pressure, it's not, not the end of the world. It's a pretty good game, uh, especially for a rookie making his first start. But um, you see kind of um, just Clowney doing a good job um, understanding – just kind of what Jones has been showing him on these vertical sets. So he gets his, uh, you know, he has his shoulder pads and his waist completely turned to the sidelines. So he's not doing a great job here staying square to the rusher. And you see him shoot the two-hand jam that, you know, we've showed an example over and over and over again. Clowney, you know, kind of just swims over the top of him inside and ends up forcing Kenny Pickett out of the pocket. Um, I still think this is a pretty solid job here to just to recover and try to get in the way a little bit and not, you know, give Clowney a completely free shot at Kenny Pickett. Uh, but good pocket mobility from Pickett there to spin out. Um, you know, this is definitely an instance where he needed to do so. Um, but just, you know, I think understanding, you know, kind of where your help is, you know, Sam Malo is covered up before the snap. You see this guy, he's got the deepest tackle to his side. This is five man person protection. So, you know that, you know, pretty much you're going to be one on one on this side. So if anything, you know, try to set this more to like your inside shoulder, protect your inside because you don't have help that way. Um, instead of getting so wide and then turning your hips and then opening up the gate uh, for the edge rusher to kind of get get that quick pressure but overall not a disastrous thing in the world you know uh Kenny's able to get out of there and at least get a positive play out of it so kind of no harm no foul there one of the things I really thought set Broderick apart from a guy like Dan Moore who you know it, at this point you know as an acceptable starter kind of a baseline starter is kind of the way I would define him uh, but, you know, Jones has such a higher ceiling, in my opinion. It's just, you know, just his overall play strength and his ability to anchor. That's something that I think has always been a little bit of a question with Dan Moore. And you can kind of see it right here, right? Like, Clowney's going to come off this ball right here on a wide nine technique, and he's literally just going speed to power. There is no, there's no nuance to it whatsoever. He is just going to jam his face mask right into Broderick and try to, you know, generate as much – power and violence into this dude and drive him back to the quarterback. But what I really like here is one, the pad level from Broderick, you know, getting a little bit lower and then you see him kind of anchor in and then immediately kind of redistribute or redirect force up, which basically stalls the rusher out. And you can kind of see what this does to Clowney as you kind of play it in slow-mo. Watch Clowney get really high on his tippy toes because he's not really generating any force backwards, but this is an excellent rep, man. I mean, Clowney, we've all seen the highlights, you know, of, of Clowney over the years. Not that he's more so a run defender than a, a pass rusher, but we know how powerful, how athletic, how strong this dude is. You know, he's he's been known as a freak, and for Jones to come in here in his first ever start and literally just stonewall this dude, I mean, this is a no contest W uh, type of rep. I mean, that's incredibly impressive, man. So easy completion, get the ball out to the flat with, to Jalen Warren, which they were able to do a lot, especially in the second half of this one. Um, awesome rep there from Broderick. You know, on the channel, 
on Twitter, we've all talked about, you know, the Steelers run game struggling. I think they're dead last in success rate at the moment. Um, but, you know, it's particularly their outside zone stuff, which is kind of their bread and butter last season. Uh, they just haven't been able to get anything going out there. And, you know, maybe the insertion of Broderick Jones into a lineup kind of helps them get some perimeter runs going. Uh, you know, I think both of Najee Harris's best runs that we've went over in this uh, video have both come running right behind number 77. You see he's able to, you know, uh, going up against his uh, three tech or defensive lineman, I should say, and just does a good job, you know, moving him out the way. And he's a, that's the thing about Broderick. He's a people mover. He's he's ready to play right now as a run defender, even if some of the technical stuff as a pass rusher is a little bit raw. Um, I really think that, you know, there are some flashes in the run game of where he can really help you right now. And that's kind of one of the things I think sets him apart from Dan Moore, in my opinion. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, I really thought, like, as the game wore on in the second half, uh, I thought Broderick just got a lot more confident. You saw it in his pass sets. You saw it in his movements. Uh, this is going to be a little long developing play. Of course, they're trying to help Kenny Pickett and the pocket here by moving the launch point to the right. This is a play they've run, I think, every week since the second week of the season. Um, so not a, not anything crazy here from Broderick. I mean, there's not really any immediate threat um, here with the launch point going to the right with him being on the left side of the field. But I just wanted to point this out because look at his helmet, you know, just doing a good job uh, searching through threats, looking for games right here. And then, you know, he – makes contact with the edge defender, but he has one hand on the edge defender right here, and he's also looking like, okay, I might go help uh, Sam Malo right here. This is the – that's the look, in my opinion, of somebody who's really confident in what he's doing right now and just understanding that, you know, if this defensive tackle right here, he's a bigger threat to Kenny Pickett based on the launch point than my edge defender is because he's going to have to go a lot further of a way – uh, to get to the quarterback, but just some really impressive reps down the stretch here. I just thought he really settled in. It was, you know, just worth noting some cool stuff that we were seeing from a confidence perspective. One of the things that, you know, I really didn't love about Broderick's college tape in terms of uh, his reps and pass protection was he was just really late with his hands, would always carry his hands like real low to his body. Um, and he was late with his hands, so it would allow edge rushers to kind of get into his chest, and then his hands would go immediately wide. And he would almost bear hug guys, right? Uh, but I think you're seeing some improvement already, you know, just with the hand placement. Uh, the hands overall throughout the tape of this video have been inside. Uh, you know, no, not really uh, too many examples of him getting real wide. And even right here where, you know, he's, you know, two-hand punching, uh, he's still able to kind of redirect and just anchor down because he's not letting guys just immediately get right into his chest before he's able to make that first kind of significant contact with the defender. So overall, those are all encouraging things that you're seeing, you know, him work on things uh, that he struggled with a little bit maybe in college and take those uh, kind of negatives and turn them into positives at the next level. Another solid run, not anything crazy in terms of just gain, but I think this is a really good rep from Broderick. You know, you see another example of that kind of high hand, low hand, uh, matched up with the defensive lineman right here gonna run a little what is this a little toss uh looks like they're trying to run a little crack toss on the outside with Allen Robinson coming in to get this linebacker just kind of a sidebar conversation some of the stuff that they're asking a Rob to do in the run game right now is uh it's taking a toll on him I think asking him to come down here and get this uh linebacker but really nice job here from Broderick just staying connected staying connected throughout the block you know staying on the outside shoulder makes for a real defined read for the running back uh, in my opinion, this probably should have went for a little bit more maybe. Uh, but, you know, you see A-Rob kind of take a little bit of a blow there. I think that's from Roquan. Um, but a good job just staying connected, staying attached uh, to the defender. Uh, you get a decent gain, three, four yards on first down. Can't be mad at that. Definitely wouldn't constitute this particular rep as a pressure allowed just because the ball comes out so quick. It doesn't really affect the throw. But I think that, you know, I just want to highlight some of the stuff that um, – could potentially happen, you know, with the two hand punching uh, and the not using independent hands or being aggressive with your sets, uh, like kind of Pat Mayer really teaches necessarily. You know, Broderick's still kind of finding his own way and what works for him, what doesn't. But, you know, you'll see, you know, if you get caught, you know, two hand punching like this, uh, it does just leave you susceptible um, and kind of out of position to kind of counter some of these moves here. It's a really good spin move right here. Uh, I think by Van Noy, who gets, you know, chipped originally. Um, with the defensive attack or the tight end, excuse me, um, and then wins pretty quickly inside, but the ball comes out quick as well. So another s example right here of some of the things they were doing to kind of help Broderick, I wouldn't say they were babying him necessarily. They did give him some help. You know, Najee chipped a couple times. They put a tight end over there to widen the alignment of the edge rusher. See a chip here. A lot of quick passing game stuff. You know, Kenny Pickett 
actually got the ball out like a lot quicker this week than he had previously. I'm not sure if that was necessarily because, you know, he was a little bit banged up or just game plan or, you know, some of the things that Baltimore was presenting uh, from a coverage perspective. Uh, but overall, I think uh, just wanted to kind of show some examples of, you know, where that technique and where he might want to start tweaking some stuff to add in some, you know, inside hand stuff uh, to kind of keep defenders guessing a little bit because over the course of the game, you know, better pass rushers will start to catch on to those tendencies and start setting up some of their uh, signature moves. Really over the first month of the season or whatever, you know, the Steelers have been insanely bad at running into these kind of condensed or heavy uh, personnel formations. Uh, but they get a really explosive run right here from Jalen Warren. Draw footwork uh, kind of plays out like um, – like that in a sense, but really just watch Broderick Jones kind of come off the line of scrimmage. You know, he's uncovered, uncovered. Uh, so he's going to come off really balanced, really good pad level right here. It's a good example of, you know, kind of what it's supposed to look like. He's a little bit wide in his base, but you can see, you know, just picking up Patrick Queen. Is that Patrick Queen or Roquan? That's Roquan. Um, but picking him up and just staying attached to the block. You know, driving him backwards, driving him backwards. Of course, the run ends up going a different way because Jalen Warren kind of has this nifty spin move. Um, but just a really good block here from Broderick. You know, takes him completely out of the play, staying attached, staying attached. The ball is, you know, 15 yards away at this point. Uh, but a heck of a block. Really nice effort there from George Pickens, who pancakes the cornerback and then comes back and cracks this uh, safety as well. But heck of a block. I think you're starting to see some of the examples of, you know, the impact that he can have potentially in the run game down the line. So kind of another exotic look from the Ravens. They're moving their personnel around all over the place right here. But this is a good example of kind of some of the stuff that we saw at Georgia with Broderick. And this is what I was talking about with how impressive it is, despite, you know, not good technique or when he gets put in these compromising positions, he's somehow able to come out, you know, on the other side alive. And good example right here. You know, this defensive lineman kind of gets on him a little bit quicker than I think he anticipates, but watch the position that he's in right now. I mean, this is uh, this is not great. You know, he's got both both of his arms are wide. The defensive lineman is right in his chest, driving him backwards. But I do like how he attempts to kind of refit his hands and get his hands underneath and back in position, which is good. Takes him a second, but he does refit his hands and get into a good position here to kind of stall out this bull rush. And then really, you know, from right there, even though the ball is out, I do think that this is a pretty solid rep to recover. So that recovery ability, you know, showing up over and over on tape, you know, like I said earlier, there's going to be times where it's not going to be perfect from a technical perspective. That's okay. But I think Broderick's just so athletic and so talented uh, that he's going to be able to get away with some of this stuff. And I think that really gets you excited about what this could potentially look like once he does, um, you know, kind of get it all figured out. And, you know, on that play, Kenny Piggy gets good enough protection, stands under the barrel of the gun, and, you know, makes a really good throw to Allen Robinson on third down to kind of keep the chains moving on that game-winning drive. All right, next play here, going to go over another rep and pass pro here. Nice job by Broderick Jones to not get beat to the outside. I do think that this is a better um, kind of display of using some independent hands. You see him flash this outside hand. Now, if you're going to be outside hand dominant, you just got to make sure you be light on it because otherwise, you know, edge rushers will kind of just swat that down. And you have to make sure that your hand placement is really good. So if you're going to miss, you can't miss past the midline. And you see he's right on the edge of that midline right there. That's good enough. And, you know, you see the grip strength too. I think he actually grabs on – uh, to the jersey right here and stays attached. Clowney's trying to give him this little swipe to the outside and rip past him. But a really good job in pass pro right there. I mean, I know this is a throw to the flat, but look at this pocket for Kenny Pickett. I mean, this is this is good stuff. This is how you get productive plays in the passing game. Uh, keep your quarterback clean. Really good rep right there from Broderick. Uh, Two-point conversion following the George Pickens uh, deep ball touchdown. Just really good example right here of Broderick staying balanced uh, and just really doing a good job, you know, not over committing to that first outside move on the spin move. You see he's going to give him a little jab step or euro, go back outside and then try to set up that swim move, get the good uh, two-hand punch there. But I think that this is a pretty good job staying balanced and re redirecting and just mirroring those counter movements uh, from the edge rusher. So really good job right there. Again, this is a pretty solid pocket. I think Pickett could probably maybe help himself a little bit if he just slid to the left a little quicker right here. Um, that's a decent ball there to Miles Boykin, but unable to come down with that one on the two-point conversion. But overall, 
really impressive start from Broderick, man. Um, I know that was a lengthy film room, but I was really excited to dive into that one because he's someone that I'm really excited about seeing just from a development perspective because I'm always fascinated by these uh, really high ceiling type of guys that have a, lo- a long way to go from a technique perspective, maybe coming from college. Um, but I, I think the sky's the limit with Broderick, man. I don't think uh, that he has starter capable uh, talent. I think he has impact starter talent. Um, and that's something that the Steelers haven't had at the left tackle position really throughout my lifetime. So I'm excited to see him develop. Um, if you guys made it through the end of this video, I know it's a long one. Um, I really appreciate y'all. Appreciate the support um, on the channel. If, if you guys like this type of long form video stuff, please let me know. Drop me a comment. Make sure you sub to the channel, like the video. All that stuff is greatly appreciated on my end. And I will holler at y'all next time. Peace and love.